I certainly don't like the idea of AI in art as in replacing the creative process. When I come across a TikTok that is just full of AI art, I just click off usually. But can AI make a video about minimalism? I thought this would be a fun experiment in order to show you how far inspiration from AI can go. So let's see if ChatGPT can come up with a good minimalism video. I will film the video on the fly while I'm chatting with AI. So I said, what we're going to do is that you come up with the concept on a helpful sit down minimalism video because I don't want to do much filming. Okay, so here's the title of the video that AI gave me. Mastering minimalism, practical tips for a clutter free life. It's funny because all the AI titles and suggestions, if you ask for something like that, they're always very dramatic and that's one weird thing about AI. What's going on with my hair? Okay, first point. Start the video by explaining what minimalism is and why it can be beneficial for reducing stress and you know improving well-being. Minimalism is a lifestyle and design philosophy that focuses on some... Oh, fuck no. Okay, minimalism is making your life simpler, saving time, living clutter-free and just overall doing all the things that uncomplicate your life. So whatever this is to you is minimalism. What minimalism is not is making up excuses and being like, oh, but you know, I want to have a clean apartment and I want to have a, just a good looking environment where I can focus in and you know, then I put everything in pretty boxes and tuck it away, Mary Kondo style, and I still have as much stuff as before, but now it looks clean. That's not minimalism, at least not in my book. But I guess AI will give you some generic answer like, oh, that's very individual. AI never wants to incriminate itself. It's always super vague and it gives you like five different options. And if you ask it like, what do you think like statistically? Cause this engine is statistics driven. It actually has a statistics backend, or at least it was fed statistics at some point, but it's very, very hard to tickle it and get the statistics driven answer out of it. Like almost never does it want to admit something like that. So anyway, let's move on. What's the next point in the minimalism video? Why can it be beneficial for improving your overall well-being and reducing stress? You cannot see my desk right now. My desk is pretty cluttered because I just came back from a holiday or more like a figure skating camp. It wasn't really a holiday. I had to get up 6 a.m., 5 a.m., stuff like that. My desk is cluttered right now and it makes me feel bad. It makes me feel worse than I already do because I'm sleep deprived from all the skating and I haven't dealt with my accumulated sleep deficit yet and my kid hasn't either, which doesn't make that any easier in any way. How does a clutter-free desk make me feel better? Well, first of all, I look at it, I think it's nice. And I bet you do too, because most humans are more similar than they are different and super individual. Although AI might disagree. Maybe some people actually love clutter and just don't mind. Personally, I think that is a trick your mind plays on you or you have your mind play on you. I believe that every human benefits from less clutter and the environment does too, because you know, all the stuff that you accumulate in your apartment has to go somewhere at some point. It's better if we all own less for the environment. And I also think it's better for our minds and the ability to concentrate. But apart from that, like objectively, minimalism can benefit a lot of people just financially. And I deeply dislike the idea of minimalism as this privileged design thing, you know, hipster stuff, fancy knives, coffee shit. Like this is my 20 year old coffee mug here. I don't need another one. I got one gifted even though I didn't want to, but you know how it is, right? But minimalism, in my opinion, is something that really everyone can benefit from, really everyone can make their lives easier and save time and save money using minimalist concepts. Now, part two of my AI suggestion is to introduce you guys to decluttering techniques. Like, I think AI should declutter this video because this is way too much for just one video. I could talk about the first point forever and ever and ever ever, but okay, let's go over some Quick decluttering techniques. Different areas of life, such as your home, wardrobe, digital space, and even your schedule. Oh my God. Offer step-by-step -step guidance and practical examples to help viewers tackle clutter effectively. Okay, 
always get out the most annoying, most volume consuming thing first. Like when you're decluttering your apartment, get rid of the biggest, most annoying thing first, because then you will have space to deal with all the little things. And also the stuff that is easiest to, to sell, that must go first because it will give you instant gratification and if you are dopamine deprived like me, that'll feel good. Then when it comes to digital space, I recommend taking charge of your backup by doing like one big Marie Kondo style decluttering of your files, memory cards, all sorts of stuff like that. The biggest hurdle would sure be photos because most people just don't take charge of their photos. They just leave them on their phone and when they get a new phone, they either transfer it to, to, to their new phone or they have then a SD card or their phone with the data on it, which is a very unsafe way to, to just leave your data lying around somewhere in their cluttered apartment. Not a good option. You should really back that up and empty that SD card. I have two separate hard drives on which I have mirrored folders of my photos cause I don't wanna lose my photos or video. So I recommend doing that and I recommend structuring them by year. And sometimes, you know, if you have a software for that, you can also tag the videos, but I wouldn't leave them on Google Drive or Google Photos or any cloud service. Cause first of all, that's not private, that's not safe. It doesn't really belong to you cause I, Basically, it's free, so they own you. They're doing something with your data. It's always better to not have big corporations do that and give them that power to analyze your data. Oh, and when it comes to time and your schedule and everything, well, I think most people have a problem with saying no, but you also want to, you know, maintain friendships, right? You don't want to say no all the time. So finding the balance with that to me is really hard, but an easy way to deal with a lack of time and feeling like you never get anything done is to employ the two minute rule. Like everything that you can do under two minutes, you just do it all at once and then you feel more accomplished. You feel like an adult that gets their shit together, you know? And I think that's that's a good approach. But there's one problem with it. If you only do two minute tasks, that'll hold you up too. So don't do that either. Just try and find like a block at the beginning of your day or something or in a break when you feel like, oh, well, when I look at all of this, I would really like to do something about it. And that is when you insert your two minute rule to-do list block. Okay, now what's the next thing? Dude, this is so bad. Minimalist mindset. Discuss the importance of adopting a minimalist mindset and the benefits it can bring. This is again, another video, a whole video in itself. Tell me more about the minimalist mindset. You always have to be super explicit with AI. It just otherwise doesn't know what you mean. Oh my God, no, this is not getting any better. And now it wants me to get into decluttering, and organizing, lifestyle choices, simplifying. Oh my God, no, this is way too long. So it's getting really repetitive and gratitude and mindfulness. Actually, I do think that gratitude and mindfulness practice are absolutely separate from minimalism. You do not have to be a minimalist to be grateful and mindful. You can have a huge house full of books and stuff. And you know, I also believe that it's not necessary to be a minimalist to be happy. I just think that minimalism can help you find more clarity and be happier and that life in general is easier if you have less stuff. Like I truly think if you have less stuff that you will not have a bunch of problems that the average person has. And that itself makes it beneficial to be minimalist or adopt a minimalist attitude at least. So then sustainable minimalism this is also a very cool topic, but that's a whole different video. So AI absolutely doesn't get the concept of a concise YouTube video. And that is despite it usually recommending to keep the video under eight minutes, right? So sustainable minimalism, then minimalism home tour. I don't know. How would I do all of this in one sit down video? That is crazy. Here's my own. See, um, there's my closet. All my stuff that I own is in there. There is my bed. There's my floor. Uh, there's a lamp up there. I also have a desk and a chair. A uh, bookshelf is over here and in the bookshelf are 100 books because I keep my books to the exact number of 100. At least I try. Oh good, you got 100 books? Like what? You're not a minimalist? I'm not a book minimalist, okay? I have a whole video, by the way, in which I declutter all my books. So check that out if you want to. And then Q&A for viewer interaction. 
Are you kidding me? I don't know what to say. I'm really bad at Q&As. You can ask me anything and I will then ask AI and then we will make another video. Throughout the video, inf infuse your personal experiences, anecdotes and examples to make the content relatable and engaging. I think I do that a little bit too much. Use simple, concise language I have no other language to use. English is not my first language. Images on screen text. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. It suggests that I do a video on minimalism mindset. Personally, I find these underwhelming, like minimalism mindset that is something for people who don't want to do stuff. That is if you just want to dwell on minimalism and you don't want to actually get to work, you might listen to a video like that that's very theoretical and not so much like, oh, come on, let's declutter stuff. So, okay, definition of minimalism, we did that already. Attachment, now quality over quantity. Just, just do what I do. I buy one pair of shoes and it costs like 150 bucks and then I wear it for 10 years. Like sometimes I buy just two pairs of shoes or, I mean, I did that in the past, like, like my last pair of shoes lasted like, I don't know, 15 years or something or 10 years, minimum, minimum 10 years. And so I bought like two pairs of the same <laughs> and they were quite expensive, but they lasted forever and I had them repaired a bunch of times. And yeah, just do that with everything and you'll save a ton of money. And at this point, a lot of people often say like, Oh, but that's such a privilege. You have to come up with 150 bucks first. And you know, dude, that is a bunch of days of working in some shit job that you don't like and you will have the 150 bucks. All right. So unless you're in debt, you can, you can come up with that money. And let's say you cannot come up with any kind of job. I still think that a lot of people go around and they're buying shirts for for five bucks and they buy five shirts for five bucks that they didn't need even though they didn't have a lot of money they bought stuff they didn't need i don't think that the problem is that the people can absolutely not come up with the money like you all have the money for a smartphone you all have the money for for rent you have the money for netflix and stuff like that and for for apps and for buying coffee and going out and all sorts of convenient things Day in and day out, you can afford the food that is on your plate somehow. So unless you're like below the poverty line and really, really struggling, which I think like my average viewer isn't, I believe that you can come up with a way to afford something nice simply by waiting a little bit. Your clothes are not falling apart right now, are they? Actually, tell me, are your clothes falling apart right now and you need to buy a five bucks shirt? Honestly, I've been in that position where I have lived off of seven bucks a week. I had seven bucks a week when I was a student for a while because I didn't have a job and I also hadn't, didn't have time to work. So I needed to rely on uh, benefits and stuff. And so that was like half a year where I had to live that way and I had to live off of seven bucks a week. I would just not buy clothes. I would find clothes at like a donation box organization, stuff like that for free, but I would still save up from the seven bucks a week that I had, just to be safe, you know, I would live off of less and I would pay all my food from this. This was a different economy, you couldn't do that now, it would probably be something like 20 bucks now, but I managed. And I think oftentimes, like 90% of cases, it's about being skillful and having good ideas and being able to repair your stuff, being able to make ugly stuff nice, rather than, oh, I just can't, ever afford it and I'm caught in the spiral of having to buy cheap stuff because I can never escape this and I will never save the money for one good pair of shoes. Like if you have that mindset, that is not a mindset of growth. That is a mindset of I am a loser. I cannot afford anything. I will never get out of this. Like you cannot live like this. Don't do this to yourself. Rather say to yourself, I can save up. I will find a way. I will get help. I will find people. I will get an education. You can get an education for free nowadays. All you need to do is invest your time in something other than watching shows on some illegal server or whatever you are doing with your time that is stealing your time because that time is money in a way that you can use this time invested in yourself 
learn something, learn something for free, learn a programming language. And that is something you can monetize, you can make a career out of this later, and then you can get out of this, this life. Okay, if that's really you, you can get out of there. All you need is skills and if you don't have skills, you can build them for free. We live in a, in a world right now where you can get skills for free. I don't think that this applies to my average viewer. I think that my average viewer has actually a lot of opportunities and I think that you should not hide behind excuses like that, but I digress. So the next thing is mindful consumption embracing quality because because like seriously one pair of shoes in 10 years the problem is more if you walk a lot that it'll break earlier and then you could make the argument like would it really make sense for me to buy a pair of shoes that is expensive because i'm just walking a lot and then you would really have to weigh the options but the argument holds that over time if you integrate that you spend a certain amount on your shoes so you have to decide, do I want to make an investment and buy shoes that will last me, let's say you walk a lot so they last just three years, or do I want to buy shoes that will last me one year and that are just significantly cheaper, but overall they are just cheaper in this period of time and when I look at the long period, they are actually more expensive. So I will not save money. I mean, if you have to pay credit fees because you really can't afford the shoes, of course, that makes no sense. But honestly, I would just find some free shoes somewhere. Like there is some person out there that would give me an old pair of their shoes. I would wear them until I have the money for my own good shoes. I would buy them then. I would find something for free because I'm stubborn as hell. I just fundamentally dislike this concept of buying something three times, spending more money on it that you could invest in something else just because you need it now. In my opinion, there's always a way around that. There's always a solution. And often there's also a person who would like to help you, but you're just too proud to ask. So don't be that. I have gotten over myself, I don't do that anymore. And if I was in the position that I was in back then when I was like uh, not very rich and a struggling student, now I would definitely ask for help. And it goes on with mindful consumption. Still, I think this video is getting too long. Simplifying daily life, too much, too much, too much, too much. Mental clarity and focus and contentment and simplicity. All of this is, this is, this could be a book. This is not a video. And then minimalism beyond possessions, extend the concept to other areas of life. I don't want to, I want to make a nice, concise video. So yeah, AI is trying, I don't know. But what do you think? Do you think these are good talking points? Do you think it's it's a good concept? Because as I said, I believe that language wise, this AI is not too bad. It actually can come up with good points. It also helped me with my English sometimes. I use it for that and to find like synonyms of stuff or better ways to formulate a sentence. I'm kind of undecided on this one. I think I will use it for some inspiration in the future because sometimes I lack the clarity in the structure and especially in foreign language, it's hard to get your point across in a meaningful way. So maybe I'm gonna use it in the future. What do you think? Do you dislike AI? Do you Have you used ChatGPT before? Have you tried it? Do you think it's weird or, you know, um, what I personally don't understand other people who like seek advice from AI like you can google all that stuff like it doesn't even do web scraping so you cannot feed it a URL and say like hey can you check this out for me what do you think about this and that you can't do that so for me that's already pretty pointless because it has this weird cutoff after like 2021 or something when it was fed all this information and it was trained and then after that, it does not have any more information. It doesn't grow. And it also doesn't learn from the conversations, which is kind of good because that means it maybe stores just a text or something until you delete it. I personally don't think they delete that. And I also don't think that they absolutely don't use that to you know, improve their model. They have feedback, little buttons here, like thumbs up and thumbs down. If you get a good answer, you can give it thumbs up. So of course they are learning from this. And I don't think that you should enter any kind of private data in such engine. But overall, I think it could be a good source of inspiration, just like a Google search, you know? I think it is an advanced version of a Google search in some way. I mean, it would be more awesome if it wouldn't lack 
the web scraping capabilities. But overall, I think I'm not gonna use it too much because you can go down a rabbit hole pretty quick and use it to just procrastinate and get lost in new ideas. And it's a little bit like making sketches, but not really finishing a detailed painting. I don't wanna do that with my videos. I want to make detailed, interesting videos for you guys. So yeah, let me know what you think about this. Has AI come up with a good minimalism video for you? Do you want more AI videos from now on? Just um, let me know. That's it.